brought to you almost live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoking host, the good old boys. It's sippin' time. Yes, it's sippin' time again. Hello and welcome to this sips episode where everything good in life is worth discussing. As always, we are the best thing on at 2 a.m. Fact. Absolute fact. Absolute Absolute fact. fact. Absolutely. Yeah, but at 1 a.m. we're... Like thirty eight. Right? Yeah, totally yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's just one a.m. Where it's, we could it's, even probably be good at three a.m. Yeah, no, I, we're definitely no, better. No, at we're yeah. definitely yeah, yeah. 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 One a.m. We can't. Yep. No, yeah. no. Well, you know, we can hope. The other day, I woke up at four a.m. for no reason. I turned on our show. We were the best thing. I'm sure. Awesome. Yeah. I'm sure. Definitely the best thing in that house. That's for sure. <laughs> so evil, dude. <laughs> This is Made Man Bob, and joining me today are Made Man Brent. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. I was expecting some Kansas City barbecue for today, but I guess I missed out. Well, we don't have barbecue in the basement. We'd all die of you know carbon <laughs> monoxide poisoning. So, I mean, you know, what do you expect? It's damp and it's enclosed, and and you don't want to you don't want to mess with something like that. So, yeah. And Made Man Maury. Good morning. I agree with Brent. I thought that that smokestack outside behind your house was what you were going to be serving us in the basement. No, I'm just burning all the evidence. Oh. Somebody's got to do it. And good old boy, Justin. I do love, good morning, Bob. I do love the uh, cornfields and then the mirror behind you. It looks like corn's going on forever. That was a pretty good effect. That's a large screen TV. Oh, probably right. <laughs> Mirror, TV. There's corn behind me. It was, it, it was porn last time I checked. So I, I, I don't know. He's got a speech impediment. That's how he says it. So, and good old boy, Harmeet. Thanks for having me, Bob. Uh, next time you need to get rid of a body, don't call me again, please. Sissy. You know, best friend will help you move. A friend will help you move. Best friend will help you move. A body. Yes. So. True. Brent, Maury, and myself. Don't ask about the smokestack. Do yeah. not ask about the smokestack. Brent, Maury, and myself were the Bourbon Mafia. Yes. There is no mafia. <laughs> the Bourbon <laughs> Mafia is a <laughs> what mafia? Is a nonprofit organization with uh, bourbon enthusiasts and industry professionals with representation in eight states and two countries. Our members combine a love of bourbon with a passion for charitable work. The group uses their love of our native spirit to raise money for local and national charities through rare bottle auctions and other themed events. What country did you guys add? Australia. Australia. Nice. Oh, oh yeah, baby. Oh. You're not. You're not. Boy, mate. You're not. You weren't just. Uh, you're satisfied with just you know contiguous United Australia, States. Australia. Yeah. Australia. Other, Australia. We love nice. you. Hey, I'm Professor Bruce. Over here's Professor Bruce, and over there is Professor Bruce. Yeah. Australia, baby. So if we ever get down there. Not only am I going to do the Mad Max thing, but I got friends there now. So, And you can check them out on Facebook at the Bourbon Mafia. A, our show was also sponsored in part by the For Order of Whiskey Society. To find out more about the society and their events, well, well we used to have events. Yeah. It was, it was, no, we have an event coming up. We have well, we're the Zoom tastings and stuff, but our, our in-person tastings are still quite on hold. Pick up a Zoom kit. So at uh, you can visit them at ftlws.com. And we're also sponsored in part by uh, Fine Spirits in Cooper City, Florida, home of the animatic machines, serving great wines, whiskeys, and other spirits by the glass. You can find them at www.finespirits.net or at youporn. Www. Oh, is it facebook.com slash fine spirits. Youporn. Yeah. Youporn. Yeah. Yeah. Youport.com. So. Look for the Fine Spirits logo channel. Yeah. I, I don't know. We don't have a, we don't have a porn channel. But although I did do some nice bottle shots and hey, unbox, hey, 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 unboxing hey. videos, dude. Uh, unboxing oh, videos. Oh, that's what you call them Ooh, now. Look, porn. what you and your wife do in the privacy of your home, your own business, buddy. <laughs> that's bourbon porn at its finest, yeah. right there. Okay. Well, our sip segments are all about wine, distilled spirits, tea, coffee, and pretty much anything else you can drink. And today's show, we have a range of spirits. Uh, for today, we're going to be dis- discussing spirits from Elijah Craig. We have the Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. We have Woodenville Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 
We have Woodenville, Woodenville Straight Bourbon Whiskey Port Finish. We have Hirsch Horizons. And from uh, Jay Rieger, we have Rieger's Kansas City Whiskey, Rieger's Midwestern Dry Gin, and Rieger's Cafe Amaro. So we're going to have Justin tell us all about our sips ratings. All right. Today I'm going to be channeling my inner Midwesterner. No. Oh, buffer from the boxing world. What? No, don't say that. He'll sue you. <laughs> oh, he'll sue you. One sips. Give me a glass of water to wash out my mouth. Two sips. You gotta wait for the. You wanna wait? It's like it's the first time he's done it every time. <laughs> Fifty first date. Been doing it for four years, every single month, and it's like it's the first time every time. Just like fifty first dates. Yeah. Have you been here for four years? Nice. Two sips. Nice. But what else do you have? Well, isn't that nice? Three sips. Hmm. Interesting. What was this again? Sounds like Clark Kent. <laughs> four Mr. Jameson, I want to go and do a story on these kids. Yeah. <laughs> Four sips. Let's keep this secret to ourselves. Pour me another. Sound like a ghost. Now chant that's there. Don Pardo. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> Weighing in at five sips. Oh my! I was unaware anything could be this good. Again, I'm getting Don Pardo. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. Yeah. Good old boy, Justin. Yeah. Come on down. Yeah. For you today, we have some Z-Brick wall covering, a fine fur from Dicker and Dicker in Beverly Hills, and a Spiegel catalog, gift certificate of Spiegel catalog, Chicago, Illinois, 60609. Some rice aroni, the San Francisco treat. They are very close. There you go. So we're going to have Brent tell us about our first whiskey. So uh, take it away, Brent. Thanks, Bob. Uh, our first whiskey is going to be Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. It's, it comes in at 94 proof. That's 47% ABV uh, with a, about a $50 uh, man's price tag on it for the... We so, got a little rule back home. If it's brown, drink it down. It's brown. This is brown. I don't know what color brown yet, but we'll find out. So the newest addition to the Elijah Craig line... The process for the toasted barrel begins with fully matured Elijah Craig small batch, which is dumped and then re-entered at barrel proof into a second custom toasted new oak barrel designed in partnership with Independent Stave Company. Made with 18-month air dried oak, the finishing barrel is first toasted and then flash charred using a moderate toast temperature and toast time. An extensive research and development process resulted in a final barrel toast profile bringing forward dark sugar flavors within the wood to create a balance of smokiness and sweetness after months of finishing. Only charred new American oak barrels are used throughout the process to maintain the standards of identity class and type designation for straight bourbon whiskey. So the color of this is a nice dark copper penny. It's a nice burnished color. It's beautiful. It's just it's one of the darker ones that we have today. Um, on the nose, very typical of the bourbon, of your bourbon nose, where you get that vanilla, the caramel, um, just a, just a hint of smoke to it when you get that after it's sat for a little while. On the palate, big pepper notes, you get this, this, this milk chocolate that just really comes through and kind of like just cover, coat your mouth with it, coat your mouth. Um, and the finish... Oh, and this is, it's got spice and it's got this chuck. It's like a, it turns almost into a dark chocolate as it, as it finishes off. This is just beautiful. This is something that's, I mean, this is, uh, this is going to be something that they've really improved upon, I think, yeah. as far as, uh, as far as a regular. Well, they were, compare, Rick's, they were kind enough to send in the, the press kit, uh, a small bottle of the standard Elijah Craig so that we could actually compare the two. And, and it's, you know, it's Elijah Craig, 94 proof Elijah Craig. We've all had it a million times. You know, a great bourbon for the money. I've, consume more of it than i care to admit it's one of my house standards I yeah that exactly uh, I, mean, I mean it's, it's, a, it's a great whiskey for you know for the price you can't beat it um but when uh, unfortunately you know they gave us the two bottles and when you compare <laughs> the two the regular Elijah quake is just i mean this toasted is just so much more of oh, everything yeah. i like, mean even the a, color it's it's right. about five shades darker um 
it's just, I mean, I mean, there's a twenty dollar price tag difference in the two of them, and it is worth every penny, every of dime, every oh, penny absolutely of every dime. It's, uh, yeah, the milk chocolate. It's almost like, I mean, that on the back palate, it's almost like drinking, you know, like a like a YooHoo. I mean, it's just mm. it's just chocolatey and. That that at that toast comes through so well. They've they've done an amazing job on this one. What do you I think? I literally Mark? have not had a YooHoo in thirty years. What are you talking about, dude? You, you haven't drink had a YooHoo all the time. YooHoo, yeah. damn! It's a chocolate milk drink that yeah, contains yeah, no know. dairy. Think about that. Wrap your head around uh, that. One. That's like having Jello without without gelatin. I mean, it's like <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's, it tastes it. like milk. They do a good job. You yeah, do. I don't know what it's made of, but yeah, uh, you know. Yeah. I don't know. You see Star Wars when you know Luke was over there milking that weird creature. I, I don't know. I don't know. What would you think, Maury? I agree with everything you guys have said. Amazingly enough, uh, it's beautifully done. It's uh, good old Elijah Craig amped up. Everything is just amped up. Again, I think it's uh, I think it's well priced. I think the regular Elijah Craig is actually bargain price. It's a little bit below hmm, what yeah, it, it's what below it, it should be. It always has been. Right. So, although it seems like a big differential, almost uh, you know a seventy eighty percent markup, uh, this is price where it belongs, and uh, I think it's beautiful, really, really wonderful. What do you think, Justin? I think it's really well made. Compares favorably to bottles that I've paid hundreds of dollars for, and I've never seen a better color. It reflects the light. Like a diamond, pretty damn good. Yeah, in the kit they actually sent us uh, pieces of staves. You know, one with just toast, one with the regular number three char, and one with the toasting and the one char, so you could see sort of the difference uh, between the different barrel woods. But I think they've come onto a winner with this one. If I, mean, I hold if- them up to the microphone, can you see them? Here, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> you, can, you can go online and see examples yeah. of toasted barrels versus charred barrels. Yeah. Yes. There's a there's a line, a red line that goes deep into the barrel. It's a few millimeters, uh, almost a centimeter down. That's that's very different from the the surface char. Well, Excellent we're going to be done. rating the Lodge Craig toasted four sips. That's classified. Hey, and we're back, and we just finished uh, talking about the Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Um, we just gave that four sips. Stunning, really, really great uh, new release from Evan Hill. So we're going to go on to uh, our next one. Hey. Do you mind telling me what this is all about, mister? Why don't you tell us about our next one? Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Bob. Uh, the next whiskey is from the Woodenville Whiskey Company. Uh, the Woodenville Whiskey Company was founded in the state of Washington in 2010 by Orlin Sorensen and Brett Carlisle. With the help and guidance of the legendary Dave Pickerel, they set out with a goal to make the best craft whiskey possible. I miss Dave. All of their corn and rye is cultivated exclusively for them on the Omlin family farm in Quincy, Washington. The distillery has a 1,320-gallon handmade pot still with a 16-plate bubble cap rectification column that allows them to produce seven barrels of whiskey a day. Their barrels come from Independence Dave in Lebanon, Missouri, with the oak for all of their barrels is seasoned for 18 months in the open air to reduce wood tannins. Barrels are first given a heavy toast before charring. The barrels filled with the new make spirit are then trucked over to Cascade Mountains to Woodenville's barrel houses in Quincy, Washington, where the hot summers and cold winters promote the extraction of the natural flavors from the oak. The 2017 Woodenville was acquired by Louis Vuitton Moe Hennessy, or LVMH, the same parent company of the whiskey icons such as Glenmorangie, Ardbeg. So let's begin tasting our first whiskey from Woodenville Whiskey. The very first sample we have is the Woodenville Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 90 proof or 45% ABV. It is non-age stated, although the company has confirmed it is five years old. The mash bill is 72% corn, 22% rye, 6% malted barley, and has an MSRP of approximately $40. Uh, this is a nice whiskey. It's got a beautiful coppery color. Um, the nose is definitely fruity, definitely corn, oak, some caramel, brown sugar, and a little hint of uh, banana and nuts. On the palate, it has a nice viscosity. It's mouth coating. You get caramel, oak, toasted oak, 
vanilla. It's a little bit of tropical fruit, spice, and nuts. It's For me, it's a little bit on the young side, uh, but I think with air, it's really some of that young, corny note has blown off a little bit. And as I revisit it, I find that it's uh, a lot more pleasant. That's a fact. When After it's set, you know, I first got a, a uh, short finish to this. And, you know, and then after you come back, you really get some of the layers of flavor that come mm-hmm. out in it and stuff. And, uh, you know, when Dave Pickerel, he, uh, when he puts his name on something, when he works with something, you know, you got something special going on. And I think that, you know, this is a five year, this is five year that they have right here. And it's layers, it's got, it's like the complexity that it has in five years is kind of impressive. Yeah. Um, it does. It does taste a little young still, and I and I can't wait for this. I mean, I think it's seven years. I think this is going to be amazing. Oh yeah, they, they have you know? older whiskeys. But we didn't get them in the state of Florida. They weren't making enough to do. Yeah, huge. I mean, this is really good. I mean, this Bronx. is you know the, the the layers that have come out on it. You know, but uh, the longer it sat, the longer the finish was. Uh, you know, well, the take home was though it really changed in the glass. I really was a little almost put off by the first sip right out of the brand new bottle and it's evolved nicely in the glass very much definitely so. improved oh very much so what do you think jason i definitely agree that the flavor started out closed and brightened up with air and um i got notes on this that reminded me of a space side scotch so it's really different than other bourbons that i've had and i really enjoyed it what'd you think harm I think you're right on there. I think that what Maury mentioned, the banana, uh, there's a little tropical note as well. It has got that, um, it's got more of that, that scotchy note to it, maybe because of the type of oak. When, when they told, when I bought this years ago, when it first came available, and actually about a year ago in Florida, uh, they were telling us that the a lot of the oak for these barrels was actually uh, Corsa Scariana rather than Corsa Salba. I don't know if they're still doing that since they're, they're buying from... Uh, uh, was it in Lebanon, Missouri, now Independence Dave. But maybe they are using some wood, uh, Washington oak because there's a definite uh, it, there's a definite difference to this than the stuff I've had from Kentucky. It, it's it's different. And it's, it's and I don't think it's just because it's young. Five years is not super young. No, no. Yeah. Well, that was just an impression that it, it initially, uh, right out of the bottle, tasted a little young. But, you know, it's got plenty of time on it. Well, it's, yeah. that's the good thing about the show is we we – spend a good hour going over these before we even turn the microphones on yeah. you know because most whiskeys benefit from a little bit of air i, I, no, I was yeah. i wasn't disappointed when i first tasted when it was straight out of the bottle because I, I, no. i've tasted this before and i know what it's like i i think it's actually quite well, well made i know oh, yeah. i think that in 2016 they won just independent distillery of the year or craft distillery of the year something like that mm-hmm. these yeah. guys do good good job and i'm very I, I have everything they make i have the rye i have their port finished I'm very well, impressed. Well, as Dave traveled around and helped these distilleries, he was very much into local sourcing of their of the grains. Yeah. And he really wanted to work with that on, on all these distilleries for wherever they are. Right. So, yeah, yes. And it shows. And so like this that, is local grain. And like I said, at first, I think they were also using local oak on whether this they, is they, got that They might not, still too. be using some. It doesn't, you know, I mean, yeah. it's not like they're making barrels in the backyard out of trees. You know, I mean, they, they're getting them from somebody. Right. Um, I didn't see anything about which oak they use. So, but well, I'm, I'm going on. I'm going on press uh, press information from their marketing people from a year ago. But yeah. who knows what's going on now? Well, all their corn and rye is local, so I mean that's uh, no, it's ninety four percent of the very product. Well so it's yeah. very well done. Yeah, right. I mean it's it's a, it's a, it's a it's a damn nice whiskey. It's really well made. Um, and for forty bucks, it's yeah, a steal for that oh. price. You can't beat it. Yeah. So. Oh. What are we giving her, sir? Toasted oak. We're going to be rating the Woodenville Straight Bourbon Whiskey three sips. Interesting. Under protest, I would go higher. But whatever, man. Whatever. Well, this isn't a democracy, I know. As long as you realize that, then just, you know, shut up and toe the line like I tell you. Uh, actually, anyway, we're going to move on to our next whiskey, which is from Woodenville. It's the Woodenville uh, Straight Bourbon Whiskey uh, Port Finish. Uh, this is 90 proof, 45% ABV. Uh, this is a non-wage statement, but basically it's five-year bourbon that spends uh, six months in ruby port barrels for a little further finishing. I mean, it's got a... It's got a nice red glint to the copper. Yeah, it's definitely got a nice color to it. It's definitely picked up a little bit of the ruby note um, to the color. I'm assuming they're starting with the same whiskey that we just had and, and doing the finishing with that. So it's definitely uh, improved on the color. 
Mm. It's different color. I don't know if it's an improvement. Mm. Subjective. It's definitely got more mahogany and yeah, uh, yeah. And it's definitely, it's, got, it's definitely really reading more flavor. toward the dark the brownish flavor. burgundy it's, sort of uh, you know end of it. But you know, a lovely. It's got a great nose on it. Uh, on the palate, I'm getting some cherry and some plum. You know, you're picking up that uh, the the notes in the ruby port, a little bit of berries, and I'm getting. A little bit of milk chocolate. Yeah, the, definitely get that chocolate in there along with it. It's got a nice mouthfeel to it. I mean, it's it's very coating. <laughs> just runs down the sides of the palate and just coats coats the whole mouth. What do you think, Brent? This is, I love this because a lot of times you have, when something is finished in another cask, the cask can overpower something. Yeah. And this is and not that's been the hard done. thing. That's the hard thing to get that balance of where does it, where do I stop and where do, how do I keep on going? And sometimes they keep on going and they lose it. And they didn't do that in this case. They, this is just beautiful. No, this they is enhanced a, it. They did. Oh, yeah. Change they have made it, it better. Yeah. They've made the original one better by putting it in the port cask and they've brought out some of the other flavors to it and stuff. Uh, you know, and especially that chocolate and the cherry, the yeah, vanilla. Yeah, the chocolate really comes out yeah, a lot more. Yeah, it comes out on this one. It's, um, it's beautiful. I, I, you know, I enjoy this one a whole lot more than the first one, and I enjoyed the first one. Yeah, you know, so that's yeah. it was it improved. Like I said, it improved it, and that's what you want it to do. Again, when you do something we've like said that. we've done this analogy a hundred times. It's you're filling the holes in the Swiss cheese. You know, you're not trying to cover it up. You're trying to basically fill the holes and bring the whole level up. And so many in you know here in the states as well as overseas. When they do cast finishes, you know, it, it's, you know, I've, I've had plenty of scotches that it, it's, it tastes like a glass of sherry with a couple of drops of scotch in it. I've had plenty that were port finished that tasted like port with just a little bit of whiskey mixed in it. And it's, it's a hard thing to do to know when to stop, when to pull back. So yeah, they've, 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 they've taken a, a pretty dang good whiskey and just elevated it. It's, 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 it, there's nothing wrong with the last one. It's a significant improvement. Yeah, I really this like one this here, one. I, w- I don't think they need to go any any longer on the age no, on this no, one. To, uh, you know, like for the yeah, other one, yeah, I would they think. Have the right, they have the right yeah, balance. Right. For the any other more, one, I think then another... you'll probably start getting more of the sweetness in it and a little bit more yeah. of the whiny character to it. And um, that's like what, we, what you said when we tasted the first time. It's not sweet. Right. Which a lot of times with port, especially with like a ruby I port. Object. Ev- a little every too much. bourbon to me is sweet. No, you just, guys, you guys no. have ruined your palates. I prefer over, scotch. Over, over, over sweet. Mm. Well, I'm going to be uh, agreeable and contrary at the same time. I thought when the How first, frigging unusual. When we first opened this, this was, to me, actually the worst of the two. And I really found it a little bit off-putting in the first couple sips right out of the fresh bottle. And this has made a much more dramatic improvement even than the first whiskey. First whiskey oh, elevated. good for you. <laughs> <laughs> the first one elevated, I thought, by, you know, perhaps a point. And this one is really like at least a two-point jump. Uh, I, I really found it to be much more enjoyable the second time around an hour later than it was right out of the bottle. So I, I think the, the take-home message for this one is be patient. If you're trying it for the first time at a tasting, definitely give it time. If you're buying the bottle, definitely open it. Let it air. And uh, and really open up, and you'll be pleasantly surprised. You can't just open it. You got to pour it in the glass. Pour in the glass. glass. Yeah. Pour well, in the glass. I mean. Open it. Pour yeah. your glass right. and let it right. and let right. it air in your glass. What do you think, Jesse? I agree with everything Maury said so far, and Whoa. I got a. I'm Krusty the Clown, and I don't like you. <laughs> and I've gotten a really cool, like clove cigarette note out of it that just brings back great memories. What? <laughs> yeah. It's cloves. He yeah. had to add the cigarette because you know he was one of those loser kids <laughs> smoked cloves and yeah. wore eyeshadow. Yeah, goth. <laughs> you know, yeah. Wearing the combat boots and a big black mm-hmm. raincoat. Yeah. 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 What do you think, Arm? <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to move away from your seat. <laughs> <laughs> I think the whiskey is well made and well balanced. There's absolutely nothing wrong. You with wouldn't me. be the first, I'm a and you won't fan be the last. Of everything these guys make, everything I've had from them. Yeah. So I'm just you know. Yeah, I mean, every time I've ever had it, I was always pleasantly surprised. I mean, I, you know, the first time I had it, you know, it's a new one. You know, try it, and it, and it's always exceeded what I thought it was going to be. So, I mean, they're I'm, I'm giddy as a schoolgirl to have this today. Yeah, they're turning yeah. out some really good stuff at Woodenville. So, we're going to be giving the uh, Woodenville straight bourbon port finished four sips. 
That's well done, guys. So let's move on and uh, let's go to our next whiskey. We're going to have Justin tell us all about that one. So now we're going to talk about Hirsch Horizons. It's 92 proof and 46% alcohol by volume, and it goes for 40 bucks. The new expression of the Hirsch line from Hotling and Company combines two straight bourbons distilled in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Each <coughs> bottle of the Horizon <laughs> provides the exact Sorry. batch specifications on the rear label for the bourbon enthusiast who seeks that level of detail. The inaugural batch, AHH0320, is made up of two components. 94% of the blend is distilled from a traditional mash bill, 75% corn, 21% rye, and 4% malted barley, aged 5 years and 4 months. The remaining 6% is distilled from a high rye mash aged 6 years and 2 months for added complexity. The packaging was designed by the award-winning company Stranger and Stranger. Love them. Love them. These Those are the folks are that came up with the Compass Box bottles. All the really cool stuff Compass Box does, that's that's all them. So Absolutely. 20 years of Compass Box with Stranger and Stranger. Mm-hmm. So the flash-shaped, flask-shaped bottle features a wooden top cork stopper with compass marks, while the label features a color scheme that evokes nautical maps and other visual references to travel and exploration. The base of this bottle hides a message for the curious, no stone left unturned. Yeah, you know when you find that, yeah. right? When you're passed out and the bottle's laying yeah, sideways. Yeah, next to you, yeah. Right, and then, then you see that it says Again, no it, stone left unturned. Stranger and stranger, you're going to find <laughs> stuff like that. I mean, remember, they're the ones who put the little bell on the bottom of the yeah, bottle. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so what did you think about it? I thought it was a great liquor to get lost in, and uh, <laughs> that's why they that's why they have maps the map. Oh, a map. That's really got to get back to get back to it. You have a map to get back. <laughs> I got notes of um, sweet oatmeal and vanilla on the palate. I got cinnamon and oak really well balanced together. It was a long finish that was um, slightly sweet. Again, this is another one that Air has really helped a lot. What did you think, Harm? Well, you said the word oatmeal. I was like writing that down and putting your name mm-hmm. next to it and giving you check marks, dude. Yeah. I, that's a Sweet oatmeal oatmeal. and brown sugar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't right. get the oatmeal right. at first. At first, I got cornbread. And I was like, there's no butter. It's just corny. But now, as it's opened up, you're absolutely right. This is oatmeal and cinnamon. And there's vanilla there, and it's it's so beautiful. It's it's lighter. It's on the lighter style from what I normally drink. Uh, again, it's I prefer scotch, so this is on the sweeter side for me. But this is really well made. I it's, really enjoyed it. It's what's for breakfast. Mm-hmm. It's your breakfast Wait, whiskey, kids. Yeah. Just, well, you were finished. Well, oh, as well, much as I hate to, to admit it, it, I agree with what both of you have said. Um, don't I, admit I it, then. The don't never admit it. Never admit <laughs> it. That's all I can tell you. The oatmeal, the brown sugar cinnamon, I mean, that's my go-to in and the morning. And there's a little bit of raisin on the finish, man. This this is yeah. breakfast. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I, I still, although it's it's definitely improved with air, uh, the nose is improved, but it's still, I find the nose a little bit off for me. I can't put my finger on what I'm getting on the nose, but I, I find it just a little... Unpleasant. I think Justin was right. Just, you just don't like oatmeal. Yeah, man. you're just in a bad. <laughs> do you, do you like today? oatmeal more? Everything like is off putting okay. today. Brown yeah. sugar oatmeal is perfect, and uh, a little bit of raisin there. It's it's, yeah. it's quite good. Yeah, uh, it's nice porridge, on the palate. Man. It's it's nice on the palate. It's got a medium finish. It's a little lighter style, as Harmeet said. Um, it's a beautifully made whiskey. I just like I said, I don't know something on the nose today. Mm. Brent, yeah, it's got that little bit of a. That little tang on the finish that when you've got it, it's just like something's not quite right. But it's not, everything, it's not the tang. It's, I think it's just the finish is short. The finish is short. The finish is short. You, yeah, yeah, definitely stop so short. It's, um, yeah, but yeah, oatmeal, I mean, you could pour this in your oatmeal, I think, and you can, oh, you know, that'd you can be, be so happy. good. Just like the people that pour beer in their cereal. You know, what do you mean you the can, people yeah. that pour, like the people that pour the beer in their cereal? You mean Brent? Yeah, <laughs> like me. I, yeah, like I pour beer. Yeah. I, I pour bourbon in my cereal. I don't, you know. But um, this is Brent. For I am a sinner in the hands of an angry God. 
Bloody Mary, full of vodka, blessed are you among cocktails. Pray for me now that the hour of my death, which I hope is soon. Amen. That's friend every Sunday morning. <laughs> every Sunday. He is every nowhere Sunday. near as cool as Archer. <laughs> no. Nah. You know? So, but this is, um, it's, it's very interesting to say the least. It's, it's nice. And I wish it, I know that the price that it is, it's like $40 retail price. It's, very nice. I mean, I don't think you're, you know, you're yeah. not, I mean, I don't know what you're expecting for $40, yeah. but you are getting what you're paying for at 40 bucks. You're not going to get yeah. much, you're not getting much more for, for $40. No, no, you're not. Sure. You're yeah. not. That's for, and that's what I'm trying to say is. Yeah. And if you drive to Vermont, you get 15 cents back when you, when oh, you trade there, the there you go. See, I'm going to no. drink that and drive to Vermont. Let's just say behind the label, there's a little story going on there. No, behind here. Yeah. Look Read through it. The yeah. Again, stranger and stranger, uh, their packaging is yeah. always top notch. So. It'll be a yeah, mystery. it's just it's It'll it's a, a it's a porridge oatmeal bomb. It's like oatmeal with brown sugar and raisins and a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of oak on it. I enjoy it. I enjoy it quite a bit. Mm. Mm. We have Keeping time for the rest awake. of the show, but we got stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's uh, really really nice. It's it's a very cool package. Again, don't tip the bottle upside down until you put the cork in. Yeah. It's very <laughs> modern. It <tells laughs> you, yeah. yeah, it tells you on the back of the label. It says Hirsch continues to blaze trails for the adventurous. Yeah. Very well, untraditional. We're rating bottle. Hirsch Horizons three, three sips. Interesting. Very modern packing. Hey, and we're back, and we just finished uh, discussing the new release from Hirsch, the Hirsch Horizons. We gave that three sips. Lovely whiskey. Uh, great whiskey for the price. So we're going to move on to our next one. We're going to have Harm tell us all about that one. Thanks, Bob. Jacob Rieger and Company was originally founded in 1887 in Kansas City's West Bottoms Livestock Exchange District. The distillery was produced over 100 alcoholic products on a national basis, including the iconic monogram whiskey, but it was forced to close in 1919 with the advent of Prohibition. In 2014, 95 years after Prohibition, the brand was relaunched as a biz by business partners Ryan Maybe, creator of Manifesto and the co-founder of the Rieger and Andy of the Rieger and Andy Rieger, the great great grandson of Jacob Rieger. The current distillery is located in the historic Electric Park District within the East Bottoms of Kansas City. The working distillery is located in a 60,000 square foot to facility that once housed pre-prohibition Heim Brewing bottling facility. They opened the renovated building in 2019, and it includes a host of new hospitality experiences such as education and tours, multiple full-service cocktail bars, and lounge spaces, a personalized whiskey bottling station, and 4,000-foot Kansas City historic and a 4,000-foot uh, square foot Kansas City historical exhibit. There's even a custom-engineered 40-foot slide to ferry guests down from the second floor to the monogram lounge from the fourth floor. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I saw some pictures of it. It's like a whole, I mean, it's, <laughs> wow. it's a destination kind of thing. It's I mean, speaking of which, they were also just named by USA Today as one of the top 10 US attraction, uh, new U.S. attractions. So if you have a reason to go to Kansas City, this is it. Let's try it, besides the barbecue. So hence the whole, oh, that's why you thought we were having barbecue. That's exactly no. why. I thought because no, no, were, we were getting rid of bodies, dude. Because we were they were top bodies. 10. They yeah. were top 10 in Kansas City. I was like, Kansas City, I, what's top as 10? Your, as your attorney, Harm, I told you not to say yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Plead the there, fifth, there's, man. There's a, reason, the fifth. there's a reason that human meat is called long pork. It smells just like barbecue, dude. So hungry. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why he knows that. <laughs> Harm, you're, you're a little slow. You're making me a little nervous, yeah. buddy. <laughs> No, it's, uh, it's too late to plead the fifth. We're going to Kansas now, City. We'll see Kansas City here at 30. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, our first whiskey today, or our, our first our first product from Rieger's is the Rieger's Kansas City Whiskey, 92 proof, 46% ABV. It's a non-age statement whiskey. It goes, retails about 35 bucks. This is a blend of straight bourbon whiskey, light corn whiskey, and straight rye whiskey. They're trying to do their own Kansas City style here. All aged at least four years. And to this blend, they add a trace amount of 15-year-old Oloroso sherry, not exceeding 2.5% of the volume. This is a fairly common practice. was a fairly common practice in the American whiskey industry pre in pre-prohibition era. As the uh, first re producer to revitalize this early practice, they have dubbed this the Kansas City style whiskey. Well, okay, very cool. It's a burnished copper color with a little red glint, and uh, I was expecting more sherry notes, but. It's not overpowering. I think they did a good job with this. It's, it's a little balanced. I get uh, a little candied fruit, but not too much. 
Uh, baking spices are all there, cinnamon, nutmeg, and clove. Uh, it's not as sweet as I expected, so I was, I was, yeah. I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah. On the palate, mm. let's chew that up. Caramel, creme brulee, not, um, not unpleasant, not, not oversweet like I was expecting. So I was, I'm very well balanced. Mm. You got the sweet spices, you got the caramel, and there's a little red fruit coming in there, like uh, berries. Um, the finish is pretty long and candied. I I, uh, I, I was pleasantly surprised because I was not expecting from the description something like this. Again, but, it's it's like like Brent was saying. They you know it it doesn't it doesn't overpower it. No, they did it, a really good just, job. It this. elevates the whiskey. I that when I saw when I when I saw this and I read up on it and and it's not a barrel finish. It's it's actually as they're adding, adding the, wine. And and I'm thinking. Two things. I'm thinking. I don't know if that's going to work. And I'm thinking, a 15 year old Oloroso, man, just give it to me straight. It's just, <laughs> don't a, pour it in anything. Just pour it in a glass, and I'll drink it. Uh, yeah, but I'm a big Oloroso fan. But it's so it's so well done. It uh, it does not overpower the whiskey. It doesn't make it cloying and sticky sweet. Um, you definitely pick up. You definitely pick up the sherry note, but it's again, it's not an overpowering sherry note. And there's and it, it, what really comes out is nutmeg. Yeah. Nutmeg. Yeah, it's nutmeg, really uh, nutmeg, clove, baking spice. I mean, the caramel is like a nice underlayment I underneath all if, of if it. If we could get this in Florida, this would definitely be in my bar at home. Yeah, and and it's just it's I mean lovely, like just great finish. It's kind of got this old school, old wild west style mm-hmm. bottle to it. Uh, I you know, think, I didn't even look know, at the bottle. Where's the bottle's the bottle? here. It's kind of retro looking. Yeah, very wet, very much it's old wild west. Kind of belly up to the saloon and ask for a whiskey. It's kind of like that uh, old Forester style, except a little more sleek. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Brent, lovely. What do you think, Brent? Okay, for me, this is what I would call a dessert sipper. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. You know, I mean, it's. I mean, you guys say that it's not overly sweet. It might not be overly sweet, but it's sweet. I yeah, was it's, expecting yeah, it's sweet. sweet. No, yeah. Yeah, I, was yeah. expect, I, mean, I was expecting, like, scrape your tongue right, too much, right. way, way too much, but it's just right where it needs right, to be. But I, it's not something that I want to have before dinner or oh, during on, dinner. Oh, my God, on ice cream? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, this, this is would be, that's this what, what I'm going to have a after, I, after I've ate this, the Kansas City steak or the Kansas City barbecue, and I want to sit back. No, and, and this uh, would go well with the Kansas City barbecue. Do this with the right as a finisher. Everything goes with the barbecue. Not as the finisher. This would go well with the yeah. barbecue. Vanilla ice yeah. cream, man. Yeah. yeah. This on ice cream or, you know, like mm. a, a vanilla or milkshake. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, this is lovely. Yeah. What do what... you think, Maury? Well, I agree with pretty much everything that's been said, especially okay, Harmon's on comments. <laughs> but I disagree with Brent. I don't find it overly sweet or desserty. I, I find it very pleasant, very nice. Um, I th- it has enough spice to carry through. You mentioned Kansas City barbecue. This would go well with the barbecue. Yeah. That's Absolutely. what I'm saying. There's a finisher. No, no, with the with the food. no with this is a this with is an all day separate. with. Uh, I with think it's beautifully ice. made. I, I was very pleasantly surprised. We got a little rule back home. If it's brown, drink it down. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's absolutely yep. lovely. Uh, you know, I mean, I really uh, I enjoyed this one. I want to go visit them. That sounds like a playground oh, yeah. for adults. That's right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I think we should make a, I a think road we should trip. Make a field trip. I mean, yeah. like a road trip. Yep. Well, yeah, actually, we should... actually, we kind of were invited the next time we're there to come and see them. So nice. you know, um, cool. if, done. If any I'm of there. us are, yeah. you know, if any of us, and it, it, in know, the and, days before the COVID, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't want to get on the COVID slide right now. So yeah. I wear my mask. I'll go on the slide. I don't care. <laughs> the COVID slide. No. <laughs> as long, I'm, I'm pretty sure as long as you're wearing pants, the COVID's not going to get. Oh, oh I'm a, you mean I'm a well, that's, from going that's not yeah. happening. I'm, I said I'd wear a mask. I didn't say I'd wear <laughs> pants. pants. I'm not allowed on that Wait, one. You're going to go on a slide without pants? <laughs> <laughs> I can just see things sticking to the slide, and that would be very, very <laughs> uncomfortable <laughs> and very painful. We can fix that. Don't okay. worry. Maybe yeah. I'll wear pajamas bottoms this one yeah just, something flannel just, just to make yeah. a brazilian before yeah just something to make it a little sticky because you know if it's a little bit warm yeah you know, you're not mm. going more than about eight inches mm. yeah mm. yeah and that would yeah, it'd be like when we go down it's like eh. <laughs> no <laughs> no that would be horrible so all right well we're going to give the uh riggers kansas city whiskey four sips that's classified so let's move on to our next spirit from uh, Jay Rieger. I'll be happy to tell you about that. So this is uh, Rieger's Midwestern Dry Gin. 
92. You're happy to talk about Jim? Yeah. 92 points. I'm happy mm-hmm. not to talk about tomorrow. Brent's a professional. Yeah. <laughs> For, <laughs> they, paid me, they paid me not to do the next one. That's all I can tell you. It's a 92.2 proof, a 46.1% ABV for those that are mathematicians, and it retails for around $30. So the knowledge and skill to create a perfectly balanced gin is not something that's acquired overnight. So in 2015, the folks at Jay Rieger recruited Tom Nickel, the former master distiller of Tangeray. Period. Uh, yep. Yeah, Rieger's Midwestern Dry Gin made in traditional London dry style using the finest botanicals from around the world. The result is bold, full-flavored gin with layers of aroma and a complexity of flavor that makes it perfect for sipping on the rocks or ideal for classic cocktails. The base neutral spirit for this gin is distilled from wheat, and the botanicals consistent, consist of Jupiter, coriander, juniper. Jupiter, Mars, Earth. Jupiter, Mars, juniper, the... Uh, <laughs> coriander been dra- someone's Angelica been drinking root, <laughs> licorice root orange peel yeah. so the color of this is absence of brown and that's, that's, uh, that's, that's true brown at all. pretty much yeah, yeah there's pretty no much brown all gin there's no no brown in gin it looks it, like water it but looks, right absence of brown there's it's yeah. clear but even um, though it's not brown i'd still drink it down yeah you put it the, in your mouth the, when you put it to your nose, I mean, even before you get to your nose, that, that juniper just jumps out at you. It's just like... Uh, yeah, especially when you first pour it. It's oh, like a yeah. juniper bomb. It's on like, the a, right, exactly that. And then then and then, it, then the orange peel comes right up after it and stuff. Um, you know, so... You still get it. I mean, it's just, it's just yeah, like yeah. overpowering, you it's know? Gin. On the palate, it's gin. Yeah. gin. Gin smells like gin. Right. Right. Now, the palate, though, it's a very, very mellow... Very mellow, very, uh, you know, you still get that, but it's not like the nose kind of overpowers the palate on this one. I would say that, you know, that you still have those flavors of the orange peel and the juniper, um, but it's a much more smooth out, uh, you know, and then you get a finish. I think this is going to be great for, um, you know, for a cocktail, for... Uh, you know, honestly, gin's not a big uh, straight sipper for me or most people, but this you could definitely well, sip I mean, or a, on the rocks. In a martini. But yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah. No, I mean, I think it would work well in a cocktail as well straight. I think it's really balanced. I think very, it's very beautiful. Well balanced. I think it's a soft. gin and tonic. I think, it's, I think it almost, a gin and tonic might actually overpower it. Like I know. I had a look at the proof. This would go well with it's not, it's not hot. I had to look at the proof thing. And is this like a 70, 80 proof? It does not drink like a 92 proof. Yeah. Uh, well, it spirit. doesn't drink like 92 proofs after you've had five bourbons. Ah. If this was the first thing you tasted, I think it would be closer to 92 proof. I think it's well made, though. It is the, it's the mouthfeel that, that fools you. They've done it's, something it's here. Some I don't viscosity know. viscosity to it. Yeah, exactly. We, we, they've done something. I don't know if they're doing all this is steeped or they've done some, uh, uh, what do you call, vapor distillation or vapor infusion of some of these, these spices. Yeah, it's them. usually vapor. Well, not not usually. The higher end gins are vapor, but the cheaper gins are usually all steeped. Mm. But this is definitely a higher end gin. Uh, it's this. Is, they're probably using some steeping and some some vapor infusion. I got to tell you, I, I as much as I love brown spirits, I love to keep uh, some gin in the house for summer at, by the pool. A gin and tonic is nothing better. And uh, this this might find a place on my bar. I really like this. I thought it, it was especially for the price. Wonderful. Uh, you well, know, if, yeah, I'm not, but I'm not sure about you know what. I'm not up on all the. I don't know the gin pricing and stuff, you know, but at thirty at thirty dollars, it doesn't seem like it's a no, not bad, bad deal. No, that's a premium not, gin, but it's not bad at all for yeah. pricing. Right, yeah. it's certainly not like uh, you know high end price ticket. I agree with you. Right. I think it's. Uh, I mean, it's like beautiful. bourbons can get out of the world on pricing and things, you know. Well, we've so. got some gins in the hundred dollar range too, but hmm. this is not. You don't need uh, to spend a hundred bucks on a gin. You gotta uh, let this bad. free. We, we can, we'll have a discussion about that later. But there, those are some ex- exceptional products. This is fantastic for what it is. Yeah. I mean, on the nose, I did get that. That juniper that Bob, I mean, that Brent thought was overpowering, but underneath there's more. There's lemon, there's flowers, there's orange peel, and I they don't mention cardamom as a as a as an ingredient, but I get like a, a hint of cardamom. Oh, they're there. definitely yeah, right at the tip that. of the nose. It's cardamom, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. Maybe that's the the licorice and the angelica working yeah. together. But you know, I, I think part cardamom. of the problem, Harm, is that most of the gins that we get to try are made by whiskey companies to generate revenue as just a fill in the blanks until the whiskey matures. And this is a gin that was crafted to be a gin. I just who's, think who's it's, we, Kimasabi. I taste yeah. a lot of other stuff. 
No, we've actually we've done yeah. some gins on the show. We did yeah. uh, those ones from yeah, uh, yeah. from this. Uh, oh gosh, I can't I remember the name from Scott one. Um, that were love gin, and there was two or yeah. three others. They were, they were, but also, we've done. Yeah. But a lot of times, you know, these new startup craft distilleries, they're making gin just to pay the bills and sell whiskey yeah, majority. Well, gin and they don't do a great job. They, you can tell they're serious about their gin. They are because, yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, this going, one just going and getting exactly. somebody from Tank they got Array. Tom Nickel to do this. Yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah come on. No, yeah, they're serious. They're dead serious. Absolutely. It's, it's got one, a great mouth star. I wonder if they're. I wonder if they're doing infusion. That's in what we were just talking still, about. Or that, if they're doing it in... That's you know, literally what we were talking yeah. about when you walked out away yeah. to, you know, do your own thing. But, you know. But we, I think they have to be doing a, a, they have to be doing a combination of pot, pot uh, infusion and steeping here. Yeah. This is really well made. It's balanced. It's just yeah. so balanced. Justin, palate. would you like the gin? You know, I did like the gin, but not right out of the bottle. It needed to breathe for at least a half hour, and then all the flavors came together. So... I'm... I'm Dude, don't don't judge it till you open it for a little while. Yeah, I mean, lovely. It's That's a great. I, and again, I'm I'm with Harm. I'm, I'm, it's the longer it sits, the more botanicals seem to be coming out. Yeah. So it's not just you know juniper, but it's there's citrus peel in there. There's some licorice. There's the angelica, and I definitely get the cardamom. It's cardamom, but they don't mention that as like an ingredient. A, like a, it's, it's like there. a green cardamom right on right on the tip of the nose. I mean, it, it's a lovely gin. And right. if you get a chance to go by uh, uh, Jay Rieger, you wouldn't have to have any tonic, would you? I wish. Yeah, pick one up. So we're going to be rating the uh, Riggers Midwestern Dry Gin. Four sips. Right. That's classified. That's, yeah, All this right. is stunning. We're going to go to our last spirit of the day, and we're going to ask uh, Maury to tell us about that one. Well, thank you, Bob. So the last spirit of the day is the Riggers Cafe Amaro. 62 proof for 31% ABV, retailing for about $30. Rieger's Cafe Amaro is their take on coffee liqueurs. Amaro is the Italian word for bitter. It is a category of liqueur characterized by its bitter, herbal, and slightly sweet flavor, which stems from the use of botanical herbs and cane syrup. Rieger's Cafe Amaro is a collaborative spirit with the Kansas City-based coffee roasters Thou Mayest, who selects a single-origin coffee roast that they utilize to contribute to the flavors of the botanicals generate. It spends a brief amount of time in a whiskey barrel, resulting in a rich, bittersweet flavor that works great in cocktails and can be enjoyed by itself after a meal. It's got a beautiful, deep, dark color. Almost looks like a beautiful mahogany-colored whiskey. Um, it's got a wonderful coffee aroma on the nose. It's got all the elements of an Amaro. It's balanced. It's got bitterness. It's got notes of coffee. It's definitely got a little hint of sweetness. I think uh, as, a, as a product that's really kind of out there for a whiskey distiller, it's fantastic. I really enjoy it. Guys, anybody else? Well, we ran out of time, dude. We got <laughs> soy on the nose. Interesting. <laughs> well, we're going to give it three sips. Yeah, we went too long on this one. I'm sorry. I waxed poetic on that gin. But uh, the Amaro is well done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Good yeah. Amaro. So uh, try yeah. it. It's great for cocktails. Good stuff. Good show. So It's on the sweeter style. We had a lot of stuff to cover today. Well, Thank you, Bob. All, that's all the time we have today. So we hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're listening to us online, do yourself a favor. Tap the subscribe button. The easiest way to listen to our show is to ask Siri, Alexa, Google, or Uncle Larry. Uh, play podcast, Sip, Suds, and Smokes. We love your feedback. You can reach us online at info at sipsudsandsmokes.com. Our daily tasting notes flow out on Twitter every day at sipsudsmokes, and our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of news. You'll also be able to interact with the thousands of other fans on these social media platforms. Do us a favor and take the time to rate this episode if you're listening to us online. It's a big help to us, and we get to see your feedback as well. I want to thank our co-hosts for joining us. Thank you, Brent. It's a pleasure. I know it's uh, 3 in the morning, but I'm heading out for barbecue. Yeah. It's the smell of Thank you, Maury. Thank you, Bob. I agree with Brent. I was a tease thinking that smokestack meant fresh barbecue. Let's go, Brent. We're going to get Juliet to provide some for us next time. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Bob. Always great to be in the basement. And Harm. Uh, glad I'm to be here, Bob. I'm a clown, and I don't like you. <laughs> uh, thank you for having me. Uh, oh, darn. Uh, that's not your wife's shoe. Let me go. No. <laughs> Good Lord. Whatever. Well, this is Made Man Bob, and reminding you, thank you for joining us, reminding you that life is too short to drink bad whiskey. What should we drink, then? You should drink more tomorrow. It's good for you. (laughs)
been a one tan hand production of Sip Suds and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time.